So uh, as Candide, the novel rolls, story rolls to its end, and uh, Candide and uh, Cacambo and their new buddy Martin or Martin uh, come back from from uh, the Americas back to Europe and they bounce around France and spend a little time in England and um, they end up in Turkey, actually, uh, outside the great city of Constantinople or Istanbul, erstwhile Greek city and now now the, the, the great Turkish city. Uh, uh, Candide and Martin who is sort of the anti-Pangloss in the sense that he is the, the pessimist. They love to get into these philosophical discussions about metaphysical things like free will and is this really the best of all possible worlds, this desire to understand and to make sense of the world. And uh, Candide is still doing this. He's still driven to, to understand or to... to, to to find the world a rational, understandable place. So they make it to Turkey outside of uh, Istanbul, and they're, they hear that there's a wise man, a dervish in the neighborhood. What we'll ch chapter is this? Chapter 30. Uh, in the neighborhood, there lived a very famous dervish who was esteemed the best philosopher in all Turkey, and they went to consult him. Pangloss was the speaker. Master, said he, we come to beg you to tell why so strange an animal as man was made. With what meddlest thou, said the dervish, is it thy business? But reverend father, said Candide, there is horrible evil in this world. What signifies it, said the dervish, whether there be good, evil or good? When his highness sends a ship to Egypt, does he trouble his head whether the mice on board are at their ease or not? What then must we do, said Pangloss? Hold your tongue, answered the dervish. I was in hopes, said Pangloss, that I should reason with you a little about causes and effects, about the best of possible worlds, the origin of evil, the nature of the soul, and the pre-established harmony. At these words, the dervish shut the door in their faces. <laughs> what an amazing passage there. Um, you know, they, they come to him wanting to, to talk philosophy, and, and philosophy is the attempt to understand the world why it is the way it is. And the dervish basically tells him, why don't you just shut up and go home and hold your tongue, be quiet, you know? And again, you know, like, what does that mean? Like, why is he so wise if he's saying, you shouldn't ask those questions. You shouldn't want knowledge. You shouldn't expect that you can make sense of the world. You know, Candide says, you know, the problem of evil, how can there be evil in the best of all possible worlds? And the dervish says, makes this, uh, this metaphor, when his highness sends a ship to Egypt, does he trouble his head whether the mice on board are at their ease or not? Basically, I take it as I'm saying, why do you think there is an answer to this? And why do you think human suffering is, in, in, in the grand scheme of things, all that important? You know, it's like whether the mice have enough to eat on a ship. You know, it it's maybe not the most important matter in the world. And why do you think the world should make sense? And why would you think that this is the best of all possible worlds, at least for humans? I and mean, it's just kind of a ridiculous idea. But I just love this, how the, the, the real philosopher basically slams the door and says, I'm not going to argue with anybody. It's, it doesn't make any difference. Um, and then they meet this other man, this... Uh, man sitting out, uh, this farmer sitting out in front of his, his front door. And, you know, they, they start talking to him and he says, you know, um, he starts describing his life. Uh, and they ask him about politics. He said, I don't know anything about politics, you know? And they ask him, you know, well, what, what is, his, you know, he's concerned with, well, you know, the important thing is to, to keep busy uh, and to not not get lazy and not to have too much, uh, not to have too little and just to sort of farm and take care of your family and have simple needs and, and take care of them. And he says, I have only 20 acres, replied the old man. I and my children cultivate them. Our labor preserves us from three great evils, weariness, vice and want. 
And this has a tremendous effect on Candide. And this is the idea that the very famous phrase he said here. I know also, said Candide, that we must cultivate our garden. Uh, and then Martin says, let us work without disputing. It is the only way to render life tolerable. This is actually quite, I think, quite uh, similar to Ecclesiastes uh, in the Bible, but that's another subject. Uh, and so Candide, again, says, all that is very well, answered Candide, but let us cultivate our garden. Basically, after, you know, sort of giving up this attempt to understand, giving up this attempt to change the world, perhaps, and then just doing what little you can to make life better for yourself and those around you. You know, like the lesson of the the old farmer. But in any case, and it's a very famous ending, very famous expression that we must cultivate our gardens. What you think of it, I don't know. I mean, it it could be interpreted as sort of giving up on the world, which to a certain degree it certainly is. Um, giving up on trying to change the world. Uh, and other, others may say, well, it's just being realistic that you just do the best you can in, you know, your immediate vicinity to make things better. You can't change the world, but at least you can, you can work to make life better for your, you know, your immediate community, or at least your family and friends and yourself. I don't know. It's really what you guys think of it. 